Hey everybody and welcome back to my latest video. So this will be a big video that's aimed mainly at beginners and I'm going to cover how to do basic noise reduction in Photoshop and PixInsight. Now I've chosen these two softwares because those are the main softwares that people use to process. I also use Astro Pixel Processor but currently at this time there is no noise reduction in APP so it makes sense if that I just cover Photoshop and Pixinsight. So hopefully this video should help a few of you. So if you like what you see don't forget to hit like, subscribe and the bell. Okay so I've just opened up quite a noisy image. I have um, stretched it and this is the bit where I'd uh, do some noise reduction. So if we just zoom out, not quite that much. You can see there's a lot of green noise in the image. So the way to remove this green noise in Photoshop is to use a filter called Hasta La Vista Green or HLVG and you it's, you can just download it and you can you know have strong, medium or weak I tend to stick with strong or medium and you can run it and that green disappears so HLVG is actually free and you can get it from this link um, it's from Rogelio Benal Andreu's website and it's actually free but if you want you can donate for this amazing plugin so let's remove that green again and redo and you can see it makes makes quite a big difference so now we've removed the green we want to remove like the rest of the noise in the image. Let's zoom in a bit further. You can see there's quite a fine grain of noise over the whole image and I suspect it's because I, I didn't have a very long integration time. Um, but there is stuff that we can do about that. Now there are various plugins that you can buy, um, some cheaper ones, some more expensive. Um, but in the very first instance you can use a few tools that Photoshop already has so this is a really basic and quite aggressive way of getting rid of the noise so you'd go to filter noise dust and scratches and you can see that instantly blurs the whole image so before we do that duplicate the layer and make a copy of the background make sure this copy is highlighted go back to your dust and scratches now it shows you a preview here of 100% but you can zoom out and you kind of get a feel of what it's actually going to do to the image I leave it quite zoomed in and generally have it over the bit of detail that you want and you're going to want it to be fairly destructive and quite aggressive you're not going to want it to be you know barely anything there I can't tell you exactly what settings to use as it needs a bit of playing around but for this one I'm going to use a radius of 8 and a threshold of 3 and I'm going to click OK so that in image is instantly blurred and that's not great either but if I take away that that layer, make it invisible, you can see we've, we still have our original image underneath. So if I reinstate that layer and then go to opacity, if I just decrease the opacity of this layer, I reintroduce some of the original noise from the layer underneath, which gives it a better a more natural and I think better appearance so for this one I'm going to set an opacity of about 45% and then I'm going to click merge down 
So that's the image now we've reduced the noise with dust and scratches and it, it actually works quite well. That is a super super basic way of removing the noise using Photoshop tools only. Okay so I have removed the noise reduction from dust and scratches and I'm back with my original noisy image. So another way of using Photoshop tools is to use the camera raw filter. So camera raw fil the camera raw filter is quite a powerful tool and for some reason it decides to stretch itself wider than my screen actually is. I have no idea why it does that but hey ho. So we can ignore the, this first tab for now which is the basic tab and head straight to the detail tab. I'm going to zoom in a bit, maybe not that much. So that we can get an idea of the noise. And this darkest area here is the noisiest part of the image. Now, if we scroll down, there's a section on noise reduction. And you, you can just play around with these sliders to actually get some noise reduction going on. So if we slide it all the way to the right, you'll see quite a big decrease in, col in the colour noise. So if I drag that to zero, can you see all these like red and blue speckles? If I bump up that colour noise, that disappears, but we're still left with like black and just, just a speckly appearance in general. So that's the luminance noise. So if I bump that up, that also lessens the noise. Now it might not seem that it has from this preview, which I'll bring it down a little bit, but if I click OK, instantly that noise is lessened. It's not gone totally, but it once again gives it a more natural appearance. So if I toggle the difference, so if I undo it and then redo, you can see the image changes as that noise is reduced. Okay, so the final way of reducing the noise in this image is by using um, a plugin or an action set. So I have a few action sets that I use in Photoshop. And if we go to a uh, few actions. So there's a set that I like to use called Astronomy Tools version 1.6. Now it's not expensive and if you google astronomy tools action set it will bring you to this page and it's $22 well you know for all intents and pur purposes and it doesn't just do noise reduction it does a lot of different things so it's actually you know quite a good buy I think. Now I'm not going to go through all of the stuff that it does, I'm just going to focus on the noise reduction. So I'm going to click on space noise reduction. Now I've ticked this box, well put the box in so that we can see what it's doing at each step. So I'm going to just run the action and I'm just going to keep clicking OK. I'm not going to change any values. I'm going to let it do what it thinks it needs to do. And I'm going to click no. So I think astronomy tools um, and all different actions are actually quite good learning tools because if you enable it to see what it's doing then you can get an idea of how to do it manually. So it's, it's finished its noise reduction now and if I go to history I'll show you what it looks like. So that was before and that was after. Be before, after. So once again, 
that's a really easy way of reducing the noise in your astro image in Photoshop. Okay, so I've opened up our SADA image in PixInsight and the first thing I want to do is to get rid of the green noise once again. So we don't have to download any extra plugins for this. We can literally go to Process, All Processes and SCNR and leave it at the default values and click the square. And as you can see, it removes that green noise as per the Photoshop plugin did. Actually, I think um, Regilio actually based the HLVG um, plugin on the SCNR routine in, in PixInsight anyway. Okay, so now we've removed the green noise, I can talk about the different noise reduction and try in um, sorry the different noise reduction things in PixInsight but also try and keep it quite simple so right now this image is still linear which means that this stretch has been applied but it's I've not actually changed the makeup of the image just yet I've not you know kind of cemented it in so to speak I mean if I tick this the image is still really dark it's almost like a preview stretch so what we can do is what I like to do is make a preview box of the noisiest parts of the image so there it is and I'm going to go to preview and click make image and that's basically a preview of that box and I'm going to zoom in and we can see we can see the noise in the image so I'm going to go to process and show you the different noise reduction that we can do so I'm going to go to multi-scale linear transform and I'm going to keep it at the default for now on the starlet transform and I'm going to leave it at four layers so the different layers mean um, layer one is like the smallest structures which is like one pixel so you know layer one might actually do a lot to this kind of noise and also layer two is like two pixels um, layer three is like four pixels and layer four is like eight and residual is any, anything else that's not covered by those first four layers so I'm going to click on layer one and click noise reduction and before we go any further, I'm going to enable the real-time preview. So if we take that off. So even just clicking noise reduction, it at the default values, it, it actually helps already. So I'm going to leave the, the threshold as 3, but I'm going to bring the amount down to 0.5. So this amount is kind of like how much of the original image is mis mixed in with the new image and I'm going to click iterations to this next layer once again you just by ticking noise reduction you can see it takes effect but I'm going to reduce that no that down because we don't need to be so aggressive once again I'm going to bring it down to 50% or even less So the aim is noise reduction, not noise elimination. You don't want to overcook it at this stage. And it might be, I might not even do all four layers. I might just do the top three. And obviously you need to kind of have a play around with this to see what the kind of characteristic noise that you're getting in your image and what you need to reduce it so I think that's quite a good result and I'm going to press apply and then I'm going to get rid of this preview oh it says it's busy there we go it's gone 
So that's my noise reduced image. So for example, if I go to, sorry, undo, that was previous and that is now, previous and now. So I've reduced the noise quite effectively on this, just part of this image. If I minimize this and go back to my original image and then apply the same, might take a little while. So that image instantly looks smoother but not fake. And if I undo, you can see some of the noise is back and gone again. So that's the multi-scale linear transform. I find this works really well on data that is still linear, so that not that's not been stretched. Um, so I would use this one at at this stage in the process before doing a histogram transform. Another um, noise reduction technique process, sorry, that we can use in Pixisite is TGV denoise. Now, this one can be used when an image is still in its linear or uh, when it's still in its linear state or if it's in its non-linear state, so it's had its stretch applied. However, if you're working in a non-linear state, obviously the settings will probably be very different. So we've got two different modes. So this is RGBK mode, which means the entire image as it is, is you know treated for noise. Whereas in CIE LAB mode, you can separate the lightness and chrominance and treat them separately. Um, for this, I'm going to keep it simple and just run it in RGBK mode and once again it will need some tweaking to get the right settings. So let's try with the default and let's see what it does. It does take a little while so I always recommend doing this preview first so that's okay that's that's not great is it so let's undo that so i'm going to bring that right down to one and try again Slightly better, but not great. Ah, so I, th I feel like we're homing in now. So if I undo again, five iterations. even better. So we can literally bring it down further. So it's not quite enough there. So if we go three, a bit better, four, I would go with three. bring these down a touch as well. So it's still noisy but as I say the aim is noise reduction not noise elimination. So if I undo that's the original quite noisy and the noise has been reduced just a touch. Now if I apply this to my full image 
might take a while. And it's done. So I zoom in. Let's smooth the image out quite a bit. So if I undo, you see a bit of noise come back in. Redo, and it's gone again. So, so that was TGV denoise. And for the final noise reduction. Uh, thing that I'm going to show you. I have applied a stretch to the data so it's no longer linear and I'm now going to go to processes and ACDNR. Now this one works great on um, non-linear images so once again I'll just cross that off. I'm going to do myself a preview box and make an image I don't want to have an auto stretch applied so I just want to see I just want this preview so I don't have to spend an age waiting for things to process and reprocess etc and I'm going to go back to ACDNR and I'm going to enable the real time preview so on this one you can apply it to lightness or chrominance you know how you want and once again this amount shows you is how much of the original image is mixed in with the new image. So if we do 100% it would be literally 100% the new image. So if I bring this up to let's say 3. Now this is the standard deviation so as you increase that number obviously the bigger structures are going to be affected and you're going to get a more blurred image. So for example if I go up to six, six standard deviations you can see it's thinking about it from this spinning here. feel like sometimes I need a supercomputer to do this. <laughs> this isn't my greatest data by the way. You can see that I left some star trails in and there's some stacking artifacts. So that smoothed it quite a bit and if I was to increase the iterations, still thinking about it. <laughs> those who are wondering why Luna is so quiet she's currently sat next to me um, absolutely fast asleep so that is really blurred now so obviously that's too aggressive so at this point you can either reduce the iterations back down to three Five iterations instead. This one takes a while to do. A little bit too much there, so I'm going to go to four. So I think four is going to be a good result. So I'm going to wait for this to finish because it won't let me otherwise. I don't know why that's gone grey. Sometimes Pixel Insight does strange things. No, 
it's real time is busy there we go so let's say I was happy with that I click off it and then I could apply it to the whole image now it's gonna take a while come on ah there we go so there is our noise reduced image so just to recap in Photoshop we discussed using the dust and scratches tool to do a bit of noise reduction the camera raw filter and the astronomy actions tool set which I think costs $21.95 and in PixInsight we discussed using the multi-scale linear transform which is great when you've got linear data TGV denoise which can be used on linear and non-linear data and the ACDNR um, process which can be used on non-linear data hopefully you found this video useful as always thanks for watching bye for now